Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Heidi from My Reading Life, and I'm here today to film my Book Naturalist Book Club reviews for the month of September. And in September, we read two different books for the book club, and they were one for Shorty September and two for Hispanic Heritage Month. So um, let's get to it and just start talking about the two books. I did review these briefly on vlogs that I've already um, produced uh, in the month of September for Shorty September. Um, but these are my normal, um, you know, single book reviews that I do every month for the Book Naturalist Book Club. So let's get to it. The first was a collection of poetry. This is You Are Here, Poetry in the Natural World, edited and introduced by Ada Limon. Ada Limon is the 24th Poet Laureate of the U.S. And um, she is very involved in writing to do with climate change and the natural world. So she is quoted as saying, I just want us all to write poems and save the planet, <laughs> which is, you know, a fabulous sentiment. So in this collection, she has gathered the work of 52 American poets, and they are all writing in some way about nature, their connection with nature, climate change, uh, you know, all different things about the natural world. Um, I was not super familiar with you know, a lot of the poets listed in here. I did know Joy Hargrove, uh, Harjoy, Harjo, excuse me, Joy Harjo. Um, I had heard of her, of course, um, and Habib Adurb, Adurb Kib, which I have read his essay collection. I enjoyed that essay collection, has the people dancing on the cover. And then I've also read uh, Dennis Smith collection. Um, Kazim Ali, I haven't read anything by that author, but I have been interested in trying something by them. Um, Camille T. Dungji, of course, we read in July for the Book Naturals Book Club, and Amy, Zanuka, Amy Nazuka Matadal, we also read in July, and plus we've read a book by her previous to that in the first year of the book club. So there were a few, a handful of poets that I had heard of. Um, I will say overall, the collection was hit or miss for me, as you know, is typical for a collection of anything. The first half of the collection really was mostly miss, and the second half was a lot more hits. Um, and I think that just in general, I am just not a person that, um, I don't read a lot of poetry, I don't understand a lot of poetry, and I prefer my poetry to be rather straightforward versus, you know, more ephemeral. Um, but my favorite poem in the collection was the poem Staircase by Jason Schneiderman, who was not a poet I'd ever heard of before. Um, and so I just wanna read you the very first part of that poem, which goes on for several pages. And I really liked the style of it because it was basically one, run, one long run on sentence. Um, but this is the very first page of the poem. Staircase. I'm not coping very well, but who is really? I'm somatizing stress, sleeping badly, eating too much candy, drinking too much alcohol, forgetting to exercise or to hydrate properly, falling behind on everything. And the sun today is an alarming dull shade of orange, a well-cut circle of marigold construction paper and a pale rust sky. I am looking directly at the sun because the ash clouds from the wildfires a country away have settled over this place so thick and so heavy that the brightness and the yellow have been stripped from the sun's rays before they reach my eyes, the particulate haze bouncing back the splendor, diffusing it. I just love that poem. And as it goes on, I love it more and more, but it is quite long. And so I won't read the whole thing, but um, definitely look up Staircase by Jason Schneiderman. And I would say um, if you are into poetry or you just want to explore poetry a little bit more, um, definitely check out You Are Here. It is perfect for Shorty September or if you're interested in short books, it's only about 150 pages long. Um, and I'll just leave you with this other quote by Ada Lamone who edited and compiled this collection. Because nature is not a place to visit, nature is who we are. And I think that really encompasses the collection very well. So that was You Are Here. And then the second book we read in September for the book club was The Kissing Bug by Daisy Hernandez. And the subtitle is A True Story of a Family, an Insect, and a Nation's Neglect of a Deadly Disease. This was so excellent. So Daisy Hernandez is a journalist. She's written for the New York Times, the Atlantic, other um, publications, and she is a college professor. She is the child of Colombian immigrants to the United States. 
And this is the story of her aunt who also came to the U.S. from Colombia. And her aunt was uh, diagnosed later in life as having the Chagas disease. And Chagas disease is a disease that is, um, you get it from a parasite that's carried by an insect, uh, much the same way as Lyme disease is carried by a parasite in ticks and um, other diseases that like mosquitoes carry different um, diseases and can pass it on to humans in their bite. So the Chagas disease is carried by this insect called the kissing bug and the kissing bug lives in warm climate areas like South America, Central America, and even parts of the Southern United States like Texas and other Southern states have different varieties of this particular kind of bug. And the kissing bug is like the combination of um, a tick and a bed bug, only much larger. They're like the size of cockroaches, I guess, which is horrifying, <laughs> just horrifying. Um, and they come out at night and they bite warm-blooded animals to drink blood because that's how they survive. And in doing so, they can either ingest a parasite or pass on a parasite in the blood. And that parasite causes this disease called Chagas disease. And Chagas disease um, can just sit harmlessly in your bloodstream, in your body, and you never have any symptoms and you never even know you have this parasite in you and you live your whole life and you never even know it. Or in a very small percentage of people, it attacks the heart and basically kills off tissue within the heart. It can also infect the um, intest intestines and the intestinal system um, and cause problems with digestion and all that sort of thing. So that's much rarer than uh, the symptoms that are impactful to the heart. So this book describes all of this science behind how this disease is passed um, and how it operates in the body and what we know about it and when we learned it and all that. And so that is very fabulous. It also talks about Daisy Hernandez's family and not just her family, but people who immigrate to the US from South America, many of which have this disease and don't know it and how little medical attention is paid to this disease because it's one of these diseases that because it impacts um, a certain minority group within the population, it does not get the attention that it deserves. And the author goes into this epidemol epidemi epidemol this divide <laughs> in how medical conditions are treated um, between different groups of people. Um, and this doesn't just happen in the US, this happens globally. And minority populations often, you know, if there's a particular disease that impacts certain segments of the population more than others because of where they live or because of their social conditions, like often those diseases are treated less seriously or resources are not put towards those disease. The thing about the Chagas disease is if it's caught early enough, like if it's caught in children, it is totally treatable and there will be no harm from this particular disease. But people aren't being screened appropriately or properly or enough um, in order to like basically offset uh, what could could potentially happen. Um, so it's a matter of like, it costs way more to treat the disease once it's become like a full full fledged problem versus a preventative screening, which, you know, there's an easy fix for that, which, you know, like, yes, <laughs> this happens all the time from different diseases, but it's just very frustrating to read about something that could be fixed and it isn't fixed until people come in like with heart failure in their 40s and the doctors don't know why they would be having heart failure at that age and it's because their heart's been impacted by this Chagas disease. So this was all just really fascinating. It's very interesting. Like she's just a great author in telling the story. She's great at weaving in her own personal experiences and the experiences of her family. And the other aspect to the story that I really thought was well done was her personal um, connection with her aunt who had Chagas disease. Her aunt um, did not accept Daisy Hernandez after she came out as gay. Um, and when she, you know, she is a member of the LGBTQIA plus community and she's very unapologetic um, about that as she should be. <laughs> and her aunt just stopped talking to her at that point. Um, and they did, you know, have some connection right before her aunt died, um, but they never resolved this issue of, you know, her aunt being, you know, having more traditional uh, beliefs of the 
Colombian community that she came from and um, Daisy Hernandez being, you know, having grown up in America and having that set of cultural norms. And so I thought that was all really interesting as well. And um, also very heart, you know, like emotionally impactful. I just loved how the story was told. Uh, I learned a ton of stuff from this. I, I love a nonfiction that sort of combines memoir, science writing, journalism, medical history, social justice issues. Like it has all the things that I like in one book and just a wonder, you know, just a really wonderfully done piece of nonfiction. So I'd highly recommend The Kissing Bug by Daisy Hernandez. Um, this one was a little bit longer, uh, but still uh, met my definition of a shorty. I think it's about 250 pages of text. Um, so for me, this one fit in for Shorty September as well. So that's what we read in September. And then in October, because it is Victober, um, so we, look, we were able to find a book that fit into the parameters of a book about a Victorian person. So this is The Forgotten Botanist, Sarah Plummer Lemon's Life of Science and Art by Wynne Brown. So this details the life of a, of a woman in 18, in the 1870s. Um, she uh, became involved, this woman, Sarah Plummer, became involved in uh, basically naturalist type activities. I don't know anything more about it than that. This book does have photographs in it, which I am very much in favor of. So I am very looking, very much looking forward to checking this out in October. I hope you will join us in reading The Forgotten Botanist. So that is it. Those are the books that we read for September for the Book Naturalist Book Club. Let me uh, try to hold them both up, even though one is on my Kindle. <laughs> um, but these are the two books, You Are Here and The Kissing Bug, um, both really excellent picks for September. I hope that you were able to find these books and check them out. But if not, please do check them out in the future. If you did read them, um, let me know what you thought in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, hope you'll join us in October for The Forgotten Botanist. And until then, I will talk to you later.